Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. We see Cardano hit $3 yet again and fall under that target. So in today's video, we're going to have a look at the cautiousness that some of the bulls are showing across the major platforms and also check out the smart contracts compared against each other on the charts. Need to get back to an update on those. So the only place I want to see Hopium is in the like button down below. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit that like button. Helps the video out in the YouTube algorithm and also hit that subscribe button down below, bell notification icon so you can see the videos pop up in your feed. And if they aren't popping up, make sure you check your settings. I am checking your comments in the comment section. All right, so Solana, ADA, ETH, where do, what do we do? What do we invest in? We'll look at that on the charts. And of course, uh, Cardano hitting $3. But I wanted to start with a quote. I do enjoy getting into the mindset of an investor. I mean, it's what we do long term. Well, that's the idea anyway. A little quote from Warren Buffett. Investors should remember that excitement and expenses are their enemies. We have to remember that. I know I love to bring some of the Hopium free content. And that comes along with the excitement phase. It is awesome to get excited. But I would rather be excited once I have banked the profits and gone out to use that money on something that I enjoy. Not necessarily getting all worked up in front of my computer screen watching a price on a chart go up and then rallying in comment sections to say, rockets and moons, our cryptos are going up. I want to bank the profits and then go and get excited with that cash, doing whatever it is you feel like doing with that cash. All right, so thanks Warren Buffett for that first quote. Now, little sponsor from the Investor Accelerator. Since the last video, 15 people have jumped on board. Thank you very much, guys. If you are interested, check out the Investor Accelerator Lite, 39 US per month or 53 Aussie per month. Exclusive content, complete post archive, digital downloads, weekly market videos, and monthly market reports. Also, we're talking about Cardano. So if you need to stake your ADA, make some passive income on it, check out the link down below. It'll be in the top section of the video description on how to stake your ADA with the Investor Accelerator staking pool. Now, Let's have a look at the market caps before we hit the charts. 2.2 trillion rounded up, of course. Bitcoin has given us another little false break to the upside, this time a slightly lower top, which we'll have a look at on the on the chart. It's at 43,500. ETH also pushed above 3,800 for a brief moment there. Now currently sitting at 37,550. And, uh, 37 and ADA again also pushed above that $3, got to around 320. Now sitting just under $3 again. Solana is the big winner here and has broken that previous all-time high, but we'll look at that on the charts. I did make a video about it a couple of days ago looking at a bearish reversal signal. Let's check that out as well. But uh, it has flipped Doge for the moment at number seven. Bitcoin dominance is the first one I wanted to have a brief look at because we've covered it quite a lot, especially when it comes to altcoins and giving us a bit of an idea of is now the time to be getting Bitcoin? Is now the time to be getting altcoins? And of course, we broke down from the 44% and it looks like we're heading very close to the low. So of course, if we take out the support, we could expect further losses to the Bitcoin dominance. But that doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to fall in price. It might uh, it might just hold steady and some of the money flows into, into the major alts. But we've seen a lot of the major alts continue or at least start to push high already. Are they overextended? Obviously, we'll have to let the market see, but I first just want to have a look at Bitcoin to give us an idea of what I'm looking at. Uh, this is what happened yesterday. We did get this push above 50 and got to 50,390. And just a week and a half ago, we got to 50,562. The little weakness here that I see is that we got to a lower high in the intraday and then the close was below this bar as well. So this is just short term. I'm only looking at short term here, not something like months away from now to see whether we can uh, you know, skim a few extra percent, but just a bit of an idea of the general market. Bitcoin has just been bouncing around between its uh, 44, 40, 45 grand and around 50 grand. And so far the support's come in at around 46, but we're just getting this little lower high compared to the, the previous recent high put in at the moment. And as you can see, I've just got this little resistance line here. The bodies of the candles, which I have on today, and I'll flip over to bars in a moment. That's what I prefer uh, when someone was asking. The bodies of the candles are all coming in 
at around 49,300. So the little note here is if we can get a move and a close above that level and the bodies, the bodies of the candles, that's this part here if you're unfamiliar with candles. This is the wick. So I want to see the bodies start to form above the resistance level. That would be a nice sign of the market continuing up rather than continuing to get rejected at around that 49 and a half ish level. So that's just something on a smaller time frame to give us an idea if Bitcoin is really starting to climb the ranks to push towards 55, 58, 60 grand, or if we're just going to keep bouncing around this level, which may fall back into some of the altcoins. And of course, it's going to fall into the major altcoins, which is going to drop the dominance and potentially take out this low. So ADA, it did push yesterday to $3.16 and then close back under. However, it was the highest close in ADA history, ADA one day history at $2.96. Previously, we had $2.94 and $2.91. So that is a nice little stair stepping move into higher prices. What I like to see is this gradual move and consolidation. We had big moves through August and then we had the nice correction and then another big move and now we're having some consolidation, which is quite different to what we're seeing on Solana and FTT. Because you know what happens if we get really big moves up and then the market can't sustain that, we generally reverse. So if I take this off log, you can see the magnitude of this move up, 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 up. And it was quite quick going from about $1.40 to $2.50 in a matter of a few days. And then we reverse. So the market was really topping out at that point. You know, everything was up. And that's just something that I keep in the back of my mind now because we are seeing everything up. Everything can continue going up, of course. But I just remain cautious, especially after such big moves. And we've had plenty of opportunities to get in, even if we didn't get the bottoms. And I've mentioned it before, I wasn't buying at a dollar because I just saw lower highs. I was waiting for a break to the upside. And we first got the, a break at around $1.30. So, okay, miss out on the 30 cents, but I just want confirmation. That's just the way I trade. If you want to continue to try and catch the lows and it falls against you by 40%, that's just a different way of investing or, or trading. And then we had another opportunity to get in as the highs were broken at the level of around $1.50. And then we also had a pullback before we broke to new highs. So there were multiple opportunities to get in, but of course, we're just increasing the risk on the way up. Looking at ADA Bitcoin, same sort of deal. We did get a big shoot out and now we're just starting to cool off at this top. We're just getting this little bit of a rounding top. And we saw that on Bitcoin. I'll, I'll just show that again on the weekly chart. And you can start to see it here. If you bring it back to where we were in February, March, April, it started to slow down. And after a slowdown, we get a little bit of a test from highs. It falls back, gives us a sign here that it's getting weak because it's starting to break down through these lows. And then it tried again to reach the top. And so if we get this lower top in, that would be a sign to uh, just pay a little attention to what your investments are doing at that point. You don't want to see it get to a lower top and then start to fall away. It's what you see time and time again. It's just a classic sign of buying the dip and everyone trying to get in on that last dip and it just doesn't make it to the previous highs before it breaks down again. But at the moment, we're not there yet. It's just something to keep in mind uh, if you are getting in later to the party. ADA ETH, we've got this lower high at the moment, but the good news is we've had three big weeks out and has broken past the previous resistance levels. And you can see at the moment, We've got about three days left in this week. It's come back and tested that previous high. So that looks nice and healthy. It's a very different look to just grabbing on the bounce at the end of a long run. You can see here we had a very long run and everyone just trying to cash in at the end of the last week or two and then it falls away from that point. But uh, ADA ETH at the moment had its period down, started to make a higher low and now we've sprung out of that low with good volume. So this is looking reasonably healthy against ETH. I originally talked about Solana, ADA, ETH, what to invest in. Charts is what we're looking at now. Solana gaining attention fast. Ethereum institutions are getting into that. It might not be for the retail, but if you want the major money, the major money is coming from institutions. So they're still investing in ETH. They're still using the ETH products, the DeFi, the NFT stuff, which is in the millions. They're not interested. They don't. I guess they don't really care about a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars on fees when you are trading 
hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, whatever it is, it's not that much of a concern because you need to be playing in that space anyway. For retail, totally, it makes sense. You're not going to be spending two, three, four hundred dollars on fees if you're selling an NFT that's like five hundred thousand bucks. It, it doesn't make sense. With Cardano, the community, obviously, always very strong. We know that you guys down there in the comments that are ADA holders or loving the project, you hear about ADA everywhere. ADA Soul, that's the big one here because Soul has had a massive move and it has broken the low. So this is ADA against Sol. You don't need to trade this chart. It's just to have a look at which one is stronger, which is why it is something that I hold because I think Sol has a very good chance of making it into this top five. I mean, it's at seven now. When I first was looking at it, it was you know a few bucks, but I managed to not get in at that point and get in around the 20 and $30 area. Would have been nicer lower, but you know, hindsight. And at that point, Solana was, I think, in the top 30 and then started to make its way into the top 20. And then I put several more videos up on the channel, in particular one a few weeks ago, which Solana was sitting at around 15 billion, which sat at just outside the top 10. And at that point, um, you know, I was thinking maybe a 10x out of Solana. And so far, it might even get to a 3x if it makes it to 45 billion. So this is happening a little bit quicker than I had expected. But at the end of the day, this is a crypto bull market and who knows what the hell happens in these things. They just go absolutely crazy. So what I'm looking at here is uh, the potential of uh, holding another smart contract, which has the potential to you know, rival, say, ADA and Ethereum. So which one would I invest in? Well, looking at this, obviously Solana is the, the better option because it is, it's crushing ETH. Uh, sorry, it's crushing ADA. But it's going to depend on the portfolio, I, I believe. This is not investment advice. I'm not telling you to buy anything or not buy anything. The way I would look at it is, can you stomach big drawdowns, 50, 60, 80%, 90% against you? Or are you a bit more conservative and you're looking for something 50, 60% and that's conservative in cryptocurrency. So obviously the moves are going to be less in Ethereum, but the drawdowns are going to be less. Whereas Solana, moves are going to be much, much bigger that's what we're looking for. And uh, the drawdowns are obviously going to be bigger as well. So it's just going to come down to which one do you prefer in your portfolio. I prefer to hold all of them in a different range. And if my Solana position gets really big, then I can skim off some of those and put it back into ADA. And if ADA gets really big, I can skim off some of those profits and put it back into ETH just to keep that portfolio reasonably balanced. Because if Solana shoots up a lot and then that becomes 50% of my portfolio, uh, when it drops, then my portfolio is just going to get dumped at the same time. Whereas if some of it's in ETH, then it might not get dumped as much and I'm still retaining uh, a strong asset because I still believe in all three. So for me, there's not just one winner out of these. I think they all have their position at the moment and ETH has been, the, the, has been tested the most. And at the moment, Solana is getting tested and Cardano has not been tested in the public space at all yet. It's, there's, that's just the way it is. There's no testing at the moment until we get smart contracts, until it rolls out into the mainnet, until we get people putting projects onto it to test it. So this is all something that we've got to keep in mind if we are uh, looking to these projects to invest in longer term. And that's why I follow them on the chart, just to give me an idea if there's any anything that is moving faster than another and what I want to hold instead or more of for that period of time to gain more in my portfolio. So to finish up on some market psychology, quote from Benjamin Graham, the intelligent investor is a realist who sells to the optimists and buys from the pessimists. So looking at Solana, would you say that there are more optimists at this point in the market or more pessimists? And the same goes for the bottom. Would you say there are more pessimists or optimists at these areas of the market? And all we're trying to do is just take a chunk out of the middle. So if you start to see some signals which you think are bearish, maybe maybe that's a sign that we've got a lot of optimists and the bears are just starting to creep in there. Regardless of if the market goes up further, you're not trying to sell it at the absolute peak of the market. It's great if you do, but that's not the point of it. The point is to try and take a massive chunk out of the middle, whether that is on a daily time frame, whether it's on a monthly time frame, or maybe it's on a yearly time frame like Bitcoin by just buying it at 2013 or 2011 and not selling for 20 years until you see some sort of correction, massive correction coming into the market. All we're trying to do is just take a chunk out of the market, buy from the pessimists, sell to the 
optimists at the top and then buy it back in under underneath. But you don't know what is coming on this side of the chart until it happens. You just got to look at what's going on in the market. So that's why I like to keep these, keep me in check with these sorts of uh, quotes from the legendary investors. Bob Lucas post here, people still complaining about gas fees. So we've looked at Ethereum and we're comparing ETH, Solana, Cardano, right? And people always complain about gas fees, not pointing the finger or anything at the moment, selling all the gas. He gets it. He likes a bit of a, a troll as well. Um, people still complaining about gas fees. Of course, the problem needs to be solved. And I think ETH will solve that eventually. But markets place massive premium on growth adoption usage in a rapidly evolving technology space over bells and whistles. So this is obviously the opinion of Bob here. I happen to agree with it. I'm seeing that more so. You know, we're seeing Bitcoin grow and it costs a lot to use Bitcoin, but that's not stopping the growth, especially for the broader adoption. And so I think this, uh, you know, like selling all of your ETH for something else, Depending on how big your portfolio is, you know, I get that. There's going to be other things that come into it as well. Maybe you don't have much and you just want to flip between the two. No dramas. I'm just talking overall. I don't think it's a place to not have any ETH in the portfolio. You make your own decision up at the end of the day, but I just think that these are going to play uh, pretty strongly into the market in the long term. And we will see the result when a bear market comes in. We'll see where these highs are. And the lows end up in the markets when we're at our absolute worst. Which ones hold up and will they even hold up against ETH as well? Finally, on to our favorite, Charles Hoskinson. This is a Cardano video after all. If you haven't seen it, check out this video of Charles. I'll probably play it in a future video as well. Vaccine passports. Now, it's got nothing to do with whether you're a pro or an anti or any of that nonsense. It's really about the core beliefs of cryptocurrency and what it's here for. And I bring it up at the end of the video. I know most people or well, some people may not even be interested in the, the libertarian principles of it, but this is what got me into cryptocurrency. And I just enjoy sharing my thoughts and my beliefs when it comes to whether we're here to be doing good or we're here to be not doing so much good. And that's what Charles shares in this video here, looking at the the good and the evil that can come from blockchain technology on some good positive notes make sure you're staking your cardano whether it's with the investor accelerator pool or any other pool out there uh, you can find many good courses out there to be staking with but just get yourself some passive income if you look if you are looking to hold your ada long term tia light 75 left at this 39 us 53 aussie per month check it out and it's early in the month this is a good time to be checking out all of uh, the content here you've got everything that's already been posted as well thank you again like share subscribe see you over in instagram or on twitter crypto updates catch you at the next video until then have more fun to get more done <laughs>